So in this series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to create our own messaging application, sort of similar to the way Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever would do it, except it's going to be a website. Uh, so what it is, is it's a website, as you can see, messenger.as.vc is what I'm using. So the first thing it says is pick a username. So the usernames aren't stored in a database, they're just uh, saved in a cookie. So people can have the same username, um, uh, but if you're going to use this for your own sort of website, you would probably want to use a database instead of a cookie-based system. But I'm using a cookie-based system because the primary focus of the tutorial isn't the login registration. It's to do with actually sending and receiving messages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in and I'm going to just pick a username and call myself Francis. I click choose username and I've logged in. And can, you can see whenever the cookie is set, that box disappears and uh, you're, you're able to actually interact with the um, interface. So because it's a messenger app, I need uh, two, uh, two different browsers to show you in. So if I go to Safari, you can see I'm logged in in Safari as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to move this off to the side. Um, and you can see here it says enter your message, press enter to send the message because you can see here there's no um, send button, you just press enter. So I'm just going to say hello world on Safari and whenever I uh, press enter what it's going to do is going to send my message. So if I click enter, so if we go back to Safari first of all you can see that the message was sent by Highcode because that's how I'm logged in as and you can see it has a blue um, background and it has, this is supposed to be an arrow if I go to Google Chrome, you'll see here there's the arrow, but uh, it didn't show up correctly in Safari, and because this is just, you know, this, the template doesn't actually affect the functionality, I just left it alone. So you can see here on the uh, window that I sent it from, the message appears on the right hand side and it's in blue. But if I go to uh, Google Chrome, you can see that since I'm logged in as Francis, it says sent by high code and it shows up on the left hand side uh, and it's grey. So that is sort of the way Facebook does it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send another message. I'm going to say, um, my name is Francis, and I'm going to click uh, send. And you can see it says, my name is Francis. It says sent by Francis, and it's blue because that's because I'm who I sent it. I sent the message myself. But if I go over to Safari, you can see the message has been received, and it's on the left-hand side because it wasn't sent by uh, the Safari browser. If I'm going to send, send another one, say go to high code, org hit enter you can see uh, that it's blue here on Safari and it's already showed up as gray on the uh, Google Chrome window I'm gonna send one more message I'm gonna say uh, youtube.com slash high code uh, just so you can see in the Chrome window how quickly the messages appear so if I click enter uh, uh, the message has been sent and there it's been received in the Chrome window and there it has been sent in the Safari window so the template doesn't affect the functionality, it was just to make it a bit easier to see which messages were sent from which browser. So the way this works is um, when you send a message, it sends a request obviously to a server that stores the message in the database because I can refresh the page and you can see the messages are still here. Uh, but the way we update it, so for example, whenever I send a message from Safari, I'll send another one, I'll just say one, two, three, four, five, click enter. It's been sent and there it's been received. The reason, the way the Chrome browser knows how to, uh, when the Safari browser sends a message is because it's uh, sending a request to the server every two and a half seconds um, to see if any new messages uh, exist. So if I click inspect element and I go to network, you'll see every two and a half seconds it sends a request. This request goes to getmessages.php and it takes the parameter of username and that username is whoever you've logged in as. And you can see every two and a half seconds, it sends a new request. And here's the size of the request. It's, two, it's uh, 378 bytes. The reason why, um, you know, I didn't set the time uh, to, you know, one second or whatever is because uh, if you're sending 378 bytes, that might not sound like a lot, but if you're sending it every single second and say someone sits on the web page for the whole day, then you might end up using an awful lot of bandwidth by the end of the day. So uh, that's why you want to... Um, you want to sort of compromise between sending enough requests to uh, update the user's uh, page quickly enough, but you don't want to send too many where it uh, puts a lot of stress on your server. That's what we're going to be doing in this series, so if uh, this sounds like something you want to learn how to do, uh, stick around and I'll see you next time.